go through and check all the individual voltages as a maintenance function. But you do not want to draw down part of your pack differently from the other. Uh, as you charge it as a whole pack, uh, you want to discharge it as an entire pack uh, to minimize uh, these imbalances. So a DC to DC converter um, is not going to uh, be a good solution when you use part of the pack. Um, the Mini Cooper, in addition to being high voltage, is also pretty high tech. Uh, we're finding some amazing things in this little car. The engine control module, which they call a DME in this R56 module model, is uh, actually got its own power management. It measures the voltage and current and temperature of the battery that's in the car and um, the load on it. And if you use uh, too many internal things while it's sitting at idle, it'll actually increase the idle speed of the motor. Uh, so the alternator makes more electricity and keeps the battery from, uh, from being drawn down. It's amazing the, the number of things that we're finding in this car. Uh, just uh, actually incredible uh, features that you almost don't really encounter as the driver but are there nonetheless. All of them do use power. And um, so you've got quite a load. We don't have an engine or an alternator to increase. And in fact, I've removed the battery from the car. It's uh, 30 volts. I'm sure I can get by without it. And we're coming up with a different solution. Our original solution was this Brusa Model 412. Now it might be possible if you took these Kellys that I did like, and if you got one that would work at 125 volts, I think this one, that's probably out of the range, but they make them at 125 volts. We have a 375 volt pack. This is an isolated DC to DC converter. In other words, it uh, completely disconnects the output from the input. There's no linkage there to leak to ground. Um, I could take three of these and hook them up to each to one-third of the cells for 125 volts and use that to produce 12 volts, 13.2 uh, volts, and tie all the outputs of this together. Um, it's a little awkward. Uh, you really ought to have a diode, uh, and that gives you a little voltage drop, and now my voltage isn't as high as I want it to be. Um, it's also a little bit of a problem making sure that each of these three um, puts out an equal share of the load. There's really no load sharing function uh, between them that can be performed, and so you're kind of trusting to the uh, Tron gods that you're taking out about the same out of each one of them. Um, that's um, probably not a good approach, but it would work, and you could do the whole thing for, um, what, um, $450. So that's one way we could go. We would wind up with three of these boxes um, uh, wired to three different segments of our battery pack. And uh, it might be something you want to look at simply from a cost basis. And speaking of costs, the uh, original approach we had to producing a lot of power uh, for the Mini Cooper uh, was a Brusa model 412. Uh, we got this from Victor. It's uh, a handsome unit. It's uh, way out of favor around here right now, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Um, uh, you may even want to skip this part of the video when I tell you. We didn't pay this much for it. I think it was twenty-six dollars or $2,700. I was shocked to see on his website the other day that this little unit is up to $3,023. But that was Friday, and Victor just got back from Europe, and he's uh, increased that. Uh, and this is not uh, uh, some sort of a greed function. We have a falling dollar, and these are purchased in Europe using euros. Um, our uh, problem there <coughs> is that with a weaker dollar, those cost more. And so in dollar-denominated uh, Ducats, this puppy's up to $3,200. I uh, was 27 years old before I got to drive a car that cost that much. I 
I didn't say buy one, I said drive one. But it's a fantastic unit in most ways. It has its own cooling fan, little heat sink, and this pay puppy will put out the uh, stuff. Um, the voltage ratings on this, um, the minimum voltage you can run on this particular unit is 125, and the maximum is um, 370 volts is what it's marked. And we're going to be 375 volts on the pack. I think we'll get away with it. The um, maximum that this will draw, it's a very efficient uh, unit for one thing, is uh, about 5 amps at those uh, voltages. At the upper voltage, it's 375. This will put out 125 amps at 13.8 volts. And that's 1,725 watts. It's a good amount of power. It's um, um, very efficient, uh, over 90% efficiency on this thing. And um, it's got some nice cables. These are your DC cables. It's got a little thing we already wired up. You get the plug, of course, isn't really wired, but it's uh, got a little um, thing to hook into your traction pack that you uh, screw on here. Now, installing things in a car, as you've seen Brian go through, I call it fitment, is actually uh, oftentimes more of the work uh, than it is to hook the thing up. And so I have a big tendency, particularly with new equipment, to set up some sort of a test scenario to see if it'll really do what I need it to do before I put it on the car. And with new electronic devices, um, typically they fail in the first few hours of operation if they're going to fail. Um, and um, so I like to sort of bench warm them, um, see what they're going to do, put them under a load, um, and do all that before we go to finding a place in a car for them, which is often quite a puzzle. Um, and mounting them there, coming up with a mounting system where it's not flopping around in the car, and uh, getting that all wired in, it, it can be quite a bit of work. If it's a device that isn't going to cut the mustard anyway, I don't really want to fool with it. We got this in originally, I put it on the bench, and I blew it up immediately. So I was a little underwhelmed. But also a little puzzled. I took it apart. The blow-up, it had a, a internal ceramic fuse because it's from Switzerland. They're unobtainable here uh, from any place that I can find. And so I s packed it up and sent it back to Victor and said, hey, I uh, plugged this in and, um, and blew it up. Uh, about the second, third measurement, it just was gone. Um, Victor was very supportive. He took it, uh, immediately sent it off, and um, it was uh, two or three weeks, but we got it back. We've had it in a box around here. I just opened the box, and here's what I read. An amendment to the Brusa BMW-41X series DC to DC converters user manual. The Brusa BMW-41X DC to DC converters are expected to be connected to the high voltage distribution system of hybrid or electric vehicles. This system is typically equipped with pre-charging circuitry, limiting the rate of high voltage increase on the HV bus capacitors. The converter input either has to be connected to those capacitors or the converter has to be equipped with its own pre-charging circuitry. A recommended pre-charge time is one to three seconds. If converter is connected directly to the high voltage traction battery, high inrush current will most likely cause internal fast acting fuses to blow, thus rendering the converter inoperable. Please note this situation is not covered by warranty. That's an addendum. And what does it really mean? The controllers in our car typically have some capacitors on the input. The way he made this sound is this is something in the car, 
it, it isn't. He's talking about some capacitors in the DC to DC converter itself. Capacitors have an interesting ability to um, take an uh, unlimited amount of current at the beginning portion of their charge curve, which tapers off as they climb in voltage. But if you have a big enough capacitor and you hook power to it, it can draw an almost infinite amount of current uh, in the initial milliseconds of the, um, of the charge curve. Uh, all the controllers I've dealt with on the cars have this function, uh, input capacitors, and fairly substantial ones that are used to um, kind of filter out voltage spikes because they're sw 